Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to create a low poly portrait in Adobe Illustrator. I'm using the version CC 2015. If you're a subscriber, you probably know that I've made a tutorial on how to do this in Photoshop. The thing is that Photoshop is not really the ideal software to create this type of artwork since it is pixel based and not vector based. So I thought I'd show you how to do the exact same thing but in Illustrator. Unfortunately, just like Photoshop, Illustrator does not have a feature that can be used to apply this effect. It has to be done manually. Now let's get started. The first step of the process is to find a reference photo. I just googled face and this is one of the first results I got. You'll save yourself a lot of time if you use a photo that is symmetrical. Then you only have to apply the effect on one side and you can just copy it to the other side. If your photo is not symmetrical, that's fine too. It'll just take a little more time. Now I'll show you how to set up your projects. Make sure that the layers are visible. Go to Window and make sure that Layers is checked. You should have one layer containing the photo. Make a new layer and call it Low Poly. Then go to View and Snap to Point and show Grid. Then make sure that Snap to Grid is enabled. If you go to your Guides and Grid preferences, make sure that you have a fairly high amount of subdivisions and that Grids in Back is unchecked. Using Grids and Snapping will help you align the triangles and connect them perfectly. Now we're gonna start drawing the triangles. Select your Pen tool, go down to the Color options and make sure that there's no fill. Change the stroke color to something that is easily visible. The strokes will not be visible in the end, we're just gonna use them to outline the triangles. And that's why it doesn't really matter what color they are. Change the stroke weight so that it's visible but not too thick. Somewhere between 1 and 5 should work, but it depends on the size of your photo. Make sure that the low poly layer is selected and not the photo layer. Start by roughly outlining the face like this. The number of points depends on how detailed you want the effect to be. Use a high number of points if you want the triangles to be small and the other way around. Now as I said earlier, I'm only going to do one half which I will later copy to the other side. So therefore I want the portrait to be perfectly symmetrical. So when I reach the chin, I'm going to make a vertical line across the face like this. The grid will help me keep the line perfectly vertical. Once you have closed the path, it should look something like this. The next step is to outline some of the different parts of the face. We're doing this because we want to keep the shapes of the face even though we are transforming it into a low poly portrait. I'll do this with the eye, the eyebrow, the nose, the mouth, the hairline and the ear. It doesn't matter that these outlines consist of multiple paths. That'll be fixed later, so don't worry at all about the number of paths. When you have outlined the different parts, it's time to start filling in the rest. Simply use the pen tool to draw triangles like this. What you really have to think about is that the triangles have to be perfectly aligned. Therefore, when you connect or merge two paths, make sure that you do it on an anchor point. The reason for this is that all the anchor points are located on the grid, which means that the pen tool will snap to those points. If you try to connect two paths in the middle of a line, the pen tool may snap to the grid instead of the line, and then gaps may appear. This does not apply to completely horizontal or vertical lines, since every point on those lines are in fact on the grid. Making sure that the paths are perfectly connected is probably the most important part of this process. Sometimes, when you are trying to connect a path to an anchor point of another path like you should, Illustrator is going to change the pen tool to the delete anchor point tool. You'll know that this is happening if there's a small horizontal dash next to the cursor. If you accidentally delete an anchor point, you can go back and redo it, so there's no big deal. Also, if you want to close a path or stop working on the path and start on a new one, 
Illustrator is sometimes going to think that you want to continue working on the same path. But if you hit the return key on your keyboard, the path will be completed and you can then start working on your next path. Again, it doesn't matter how many paths you have or how long or short they are. Sometimes a path will just be a single line between two points. But that's okay. We'll fix that later with the pathfinder. Also, remember that you can always move points using the direct selection tool. When you're done, your project should look like this. Now make sure that the pathfinder is visible. Go to Window and Pathfinder. Now select the low poly paths by clicking on the little circle thing in the layers panel. Now every path should be highlighted. Then click on the Divide Pathfinder icon in the panel. Your paths should now look the same. However, each triangle has now become a separate path. If your paths do not look like this, it's probably because the paths were not well connected. Now we're going to fill each triangle with color. To do that, pick the eyedropper tool. Then, go over to the layers panel and click on the circle next to the top path in the low poly layer. Now a triangle should be selected. Then simply use the eyedropper tool to sample a color from the area where the triangle is. This has to be done for each triangle. It's sort of time consuming, but it has to be done. If you later find out that there are some areas that you forgot to fill with triangles, it's easy to fix. Just use your pen tool to draw the triangles, and then select all the paths again and divide them using the pathfinder. You will see me do this one or two times. It's exactly the same process that I showed you earlier, and it doesn't really matter if you have to do it several times. When you're done, search for gaps and other imperfections. I found a few, but they can be easily fixed. If there are some blank areas, you can simply use the direct selection tool to move anchor points so that the blank areas will be filled. If a path accidentally has more than three sides, you can use the delete anchor point tool to delete the superfluous points. When you're done, your project should look like this. The last step is to duplicate this layer and flip it to the other side. To do that, click and hold on the low poly layer and drag it down to the new layer icon. Then, make sure that you select the entire layer. Go to the reflect tool in your toolbox. Hold shift and then click and drag on the layer to flip it. Holding shift is going to snap it so that it'll be flipped more accurately. Then simply use the selection tool to move it into place. Again the grid is going to help you align it. That's actually all I had for you today. You have now made a low poly portrait in Adobe Illustrator. Remember that if you find any blank spots or anything that doesn't look good, you can always use the direct selection tool to move points around and edit certain areas. So even if it didn't really work out the first time, you can always go back and fix things. I hope that you found this tutorial useful and that you learned something. Please subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this one. Thanks for watching.